Amen. Thank you, wonderful woman of God, for calling us, for charging us to our prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, wonderful woman of God, for calling us, for charging us up. So we're going to go to the next item. Uh, actually, the next item there is, uh, is my topic. Mm. It's supposed to be, by the grace of God, treating a topic called washing of the feet. Amen. Is it a Bible ordinance? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Washing of the feet. Is it the Bible of mm. This scripture, uh, this teaching draws heavily from John chapter 13. John chapter 13, where Jesus Christ washed the apostles' feet. So we'll be looking at that. That's what we're actually going to study. By the grace of God, I will run with speed. And the Holy Spirit, who wrote this book, is going to illuminate further than I will do. By the little research I did to help us understand the reason why we're actually studying this topic is is it is a question washing of feet is it a bible ordinance not not that is it necessary to do it or is it encouraged by jesus or by the apostles of old but is it a bible ordinance the key word there is ordinance praise the lord what is ordinance? I took some time to consult the dictionary because if you are treating something and you don't know what it means, it could be a hindrance, it could be 90% of the problem. So I consulted the dictionary, the Merriam Webster dictionary, to find out what does what the word ordinance mean. And the definition by that dictionary says one definition of the word ordinance is an authoritative decree or law, especially. In a municipal regulation, so ordinance is like a law, a rule. So if you apply it to the ch in a church setting, it could be like a law or rule the church has decided to something the church has decided or a, a unit a union has decided to embark upon. So this is that definition, one definition. Then I also lay hold on another dictionary, the layman's Bible dictionary. This time around, I went to a Bible dictionary because this is a Bible topic by G. W. Knight and Rayburn R. So they define the word ordinance as baptism and the Lord's Supper, rituals or procedures intended to comm commemorate the great events of redemption. In other words, he mentioned baptism as one, one ordinance, he mentioned the Lord's Supper, then he mentioned rituals or procedures. So the other things besides baptism and the Lord's Supper that you could call ordinance according to this definition, but the key question again is, is the washing of the feet part of them? So this second definition, when I had to state that the Lord's Supper memorializes, that is, kind of remembers, brings to forth the shed blood and broken body of Christ, as recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 to 26. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 to 26. If you are there, you read it. Whoever gets there first. To read. Okay. First Corinthians eleven twenty three to twenty six. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. Mm -hmm. That the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Twenty four. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. 25. After the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had shot, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 26. For as often as you eat this bread, drink this cup, you do show the laws, the laws that to you come. Praise the Lord. That's that is talking about the Lord's Supper. Can somebody open Romans 6 3 to 6? This one is now baptism. So he has um, given us a, a scriptural example of the Lord's Supper. Now we want to look at something about the baptism as one of the ordinances. Remember. The question is washing of the feet. Is it a Bible ordinance? Romans 6, 3 to 6. The first reader, whoever gets there. 
Romans 6, 3, uh, verse 3. Know you not that so many of us as we are baptized unto Jesus Christ, we are baptized unto his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, unto death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of peace. Five. I mean, yeah, verse five. Right? If I want me to continue. Yeah. For if we have been planted together mm. in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not we should not serve sin. Praise God. That is, is it, that is a scriptural, you know. Uh, Occurrence of the bapt the concept of bapt the ordinance of baptism. So remember, I've given you one as the Lord's Supper. The second one is baptism. They are ordinances, and then the other one we are trying to find out is the washing of the feet. So the definition of an ordinance is, like I said, an authoritative decree or law, especially in municipal regulation. But in this concept, you can see that we are talking about what happens in the church. I also consulted the Wikipedia, the online encyclopedia, and find ordinance as this. The ordinance is a Protestant Christian term for baptism. Can you see baptism coming in again? Communion. That is the Lord's Supper. And other religious rituals. He didn't give other examples. He said orders. So it is at that expression other religious rituals that there's a kind of controversy. People get so confused. They bring in so many things. The one that they think is ordinance, others refute it. So that's why my topic is wavering, other religious rituals. Some Protestants, such as Baptists, Churches of Christ, Christian Churches, so Churches of Christ, Disciples of Christ, these are Christian you know, denominations, and Mennonites do not call them sacraments because they believe these rituals are outward expressions of faith rather than impartations of God's grace. So when a sacrament is seen as something in and of itself sacred. An ordinance is a practice that merely demonstrates the participant faith. In other words, it's something he does to show that he has a relationship with the you know the Lord in this case. So the ordinances are observed in remembrance of Jesus, primarily his baptism and the Last Supper, communion, or what some denomination call Eucharist. So that's a little overview about the word ordinance. And I was looking at the Bible, I saw that the word ordinance occurs throughout the Old and New Testament. When you run through the Bible, you will see it everywhere. But we shall focus on the New Testament occurrences. We, we don't want to go back and begin to look at the Old Testament because we are in the New Testament and we want to look at something new. Praise God. Amen. So in Romans chapter 13, I'm going to read some scriptures. Flash back to Romans chapter 13, verse 2 and verse 2. Romans chapter 13. 13 verse 2, I'm going to read it. The, the word of God says, Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to the same damnation. You can see that in that place, the word ordinance does not really talk about the communion or the Lord's Supper. It's talking about the ordinance of God. That means authoritative decree or law. You can see that the earlier definition I gave us. But when you look at First Peter chapter 2 verse 13, 